Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this video. Let us discuss the ranked X12 and the Xbox One yet again. It seems to be, well, pretty much everyone's favorite thing right now, so why the heck not? Now, I'm going to cover this because there are some conflicting reports that have been popping up. Um, the CEO of Stardock, uh, his name is Brad Wardell. I'll spell that out just in case you want to Google it. That's W A R D E um, L L. And he's pointed out that one way to look at the Xbox One with DX11 is that it has an eight cores, but only one of them will work. Uh, does the DX uh, work with DX12? All eight do. And there's been other comments as well that have been floating around, primarily the fact that the CPU is now going to be able to address more. And indeed, some users have questioned this and they've said, well, the DirectX 11 is already fairly low level. And basically, others have responded, that's not true. Others have responded that it's only, well, rendering from one core. However, however once again, others dispute this. Now, there's a couple of criticisms and concerns I have with this, and I'm not here to give a judgment of this just yet. Why? Because I'm actually doing some research myself, and I don't like to give judgments when I'm still conducting my own research, because that's not really fair or informative to anyone. So that's just a crap way to do things, in my personal opinion. What I will do, however, is give you some of my thoughts based upon the knowledge that has been pretty much publicly released. So, as far as I understand it, and as far as most people understand it, two of the cores for the Xbox One have been dedicated, much like the PlayStation 4, so the PS4 doesn't get a pass here, but two of the cores for the Xbox One are dedicated to the OS. Whatever the OS is doing, be that, um, obviously, the Xbox One has a fairly complicated OS arrangement. It has the main host OS, and then, of course, you've got the two inside that one handling apps and so on, and the other handling the games. Then, of course, memory is split up accordingly. Roughly five gigabytes for games, and then the remainder of the eight goes to, you know, applications and whatever else it has to run. For example, Party Chat, Xbox Live, blah, blah, blah. So, here's the thing. How... I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to be working, because in that case, if you think that the... Um, Xbox One has eight cores. If you take eight and then you minus two, I'm not exactly the greatest in maths, but that seems to remain six. So either Microsoft are changing how this is going to work or something else is completely ha different happening. Maybe they're reducing the portion of the CPU that's able to uh, being reserved. Maybe they're going to reduce it to like 50% per... Um, say core, let's just call it core 0 and core 1. Um, so in other words, that means the other cores are fully able to do whatever they want, and core 0 to 1 have 50% each, but that doesn't really, and the other 50% could be used for games, but that doesn't really make sense. It would make more sense, surely, to have like just one core, you know, available for the OS, so that, you know, if they can reduce it by 50% or something meaningful. So I don't really understand that. Now, one must also realize that there are a couple of other things to remember. Rem First of all, finite limits of a console aren't going to disappear with a new version of DirectX. In other words, a new version of DirectX is not going to overclock the GPU. So let's assume, right, and this is making assumptions, this is supposition, this is me just giving a best guess scenario. Let's give the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One the benefit of the doubt and say that roughly games right now are limited by the understanding of developers and optimizations. In other words, the relative performance of the GPU is only taking about 1.3 T-flops of computing power. In other words, it's within the possibility of the PS4 and the Xbox One's GPU to render the games at 1080p 60. It's not, 
because if you look at games in terms of optimization, um, obviously they're simply a lot of optimization still needs to be done. But let's even assume that that's the case. The fact of the matter is there's still going to be a detriment between the PS4 and the Xbox One. So assume the PS4 also has low level access and as far as I understand it from its own languages um, and you can check those out if you want. You can search PSS or PSSL actually PlayStation Shader Language on the channel and you'll pop something up and you've got a DirectX kind of DX11 functional type of API on the on the PS4, but you've also got a lower level one where you can basically code directly, code to the metal. Um, and it's pretty low level as far as I understand it. And therefore you've got to assume the DX12 and this are going to be fairly interchangeable. Even if you give the edge to DX12 by a small percentage, let's say it's, I don't like to say 10% lower level, but let's even assume it is. So let's say it gives you 10% extra performance. There's still a massive disparity between the PS4's GPU and the Xbox One. And my point being here that, okay, let's assume that I'm a developer and I'm targeting the PS4 to be a lead platform. Now, the reason I mentioned that is apparently the rumors, and once again, I'm pointing out rumors, I'm not saying that this is factual, but the rumors have it, and you can Google this yourself, that um, basically Call of Duty is switching to the PlayStation 4 now to be the lead platform. And there are a couple of other reports of other developers doing the same thing. In other words, what this basically means is that they'll get the PlayStation version working first, and then they'll port the code over to the Xbox One and do their best to make sure that it runs at a target. So... With a shooting game, typically the target has to be 60 frames per second because it's Twitch reaction, right? So that means you can't compromise on that, which means the only thing you can really compromise is either the visual quality, in other words, reduction of, say, shadows or texture quality or um, model quality or lighting or whatever, or you reduce the resolution. So um, you can do the resolution maths yourself, actually, um, you can take, let's give a great example, let's take uh, 1920 by 10, I'm not even going to bother to tell you the numbers, I just, I will actually want you to do this yourself, it's kind of, it's, it's a good little uh, exercise if you're so inclined, take 1920 and times it by 1080, and that's how many pixels it's required to be basically pushed per frame of animation. Then if you do 1600 by 900 and look at the disparity between the two numbers, it's huge, right? Then if you compare that to the PS4 and the Xbox One's performance deficit in terms of raw GPU computational power, that is 1.84 versus 1.32, you can kind of see the numbers somewhat add up in terms of raw percentages. Now, does that mean that I'm against the Xbox One and direct x12 having any merit no this brings me to several questions firstly is it true the xbox one's only rendering using or basically having pretty much rendering dispatched via one cpu if so that's pretty abysmal from the perspective of microsoft and i don't really see how that could have happened when the cpu of the xbox one much like the cpu of the ps4 in terms of per core so that's core a versus core a of like a high-end pc is awful it just has well bad performance it's just not clocked that high um it's ipc isn't that great compared to like high-end intel anyway but even if you were to give it a one-to-one -one ratio which it's not it's also running at a massively slower clock speed well okay so that's why i think that it must be um multi-core rendering on the xbox one cpu so i'm not sure if he is if wardell is simply uh, misquoting, maybe he's thinking or has more experience on the PC. Maybe we're all wrong, and maybe it really is just being rendered on a single core. But in which case, that's that's not really good from the perspective of Microsoft. And it's also an indicator that the Xbox One, um, in terms of raw GPU performance, 
and the CPU isn't really he being held back that much. Once again, that's just a theory. And interestingly enough, there was a series of interviews that were posted and comments from Microsoft. Uh, these comments ranged from NeoGAF and tweets and goodness knows what else. But they were certainly repeated a couple of times. And basically speaking, um, if you want just the basic summary, they said that they actually got a better increase from increasing the clock speed of the CPU versus pretty much anything else. Now, that's quite interesting. Um, and they also believed that increasing the GPU clock speed gave them more performance because basically increasing the GPU clock speed increased the clock um, performance of the ROPs because obviously uh, it's for ROP speed you basically times the number of ROPs versus the clock speed of the core. Plus, it also had the other benefit of increasing the ES RAM speed. So what does that all mean? Well, it means that I've got a lot of research to do, and I'd recommend that you guys do the same thing as well. Now, it's going to be an interesting one, because obviously there is a lot of this that's really, really, really being held to the chest. And here's the thing. Infamous. Kill zone. Those are just a couple of examples of where you've actually been able to see screenshots of the threads of the CPU from Sony's machine. Microsoft are being a lot closer to the chest on this, and I don't know why. So I guess we'll have to see. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and once again, I'll see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.